while treading the crack ground of the lonesome road, you arrive at your terminus, the Divide. Place with the dark past and crazy crimson locals. But it is not the past of this cursed land that we are here to discuss, but the mutated remnants of the locals that resided here when it shit the bed. So, without further ado, let's take a wee look. Tunnelers, also known as the mole people, lizard people, subterranean shitheads, or, more commonly, the gypsies of the ground. A strange creature that we first happened upon inside a collapsed tunnel. We encountered a death claw that rounds a corner and is swiftly torn to pieces. Soon after this, we get our first encounter with the beasts. With the aforementioned slaughter of the death claw, the only warning that their veracity that we should be given. But what are they? Why do they look like they do? Where do they come from? And what does their existence mean for the wasteland? Let's find out. Tunnelers are semi-humanoid, though how this is the case will come to later. They skitter about on all fours, rarely standing up. The reason for this is that, as their name suggests, the tunnelers are subterranean in nature. Due to this, their tunnels would be quite small and making ones large enough to allow upright walking would be extremely difficult and a pain in the hole. So instead, they hunch over golem style and prowl about in all fours. I am unsure whether they would ever possess the ability to walk upright for extended periods of time. As their backs are crooked to fuck. They seem to be reptilian, although how this happened is anyone's guess. They have thick scaly skin, probably to provide protection from other creatures, and from being caught by rocks and dirt while tunneling. They have large buggy eyes that are also bioluminescent. In animals, this is usually used for signaling other animals or luring prey. Now, since they didn't emerge until after the device went off, we can assume they hunted prey underground. In this case, the light source would be a great way to attract them, the prey, and also signal other members of their pack, perhaps by some advanced form of winking language. Their hands and feet end in massive claws, used, most likely, to aid in digging and mauling things to death. I can only assume the razor sharp teeth help with this as well. The spikes dotted around their body are very odd. I am assuming that they function as some sort of sensory organ of sorts, as sight, even with their glowing bug eyes, is probably quite impaired. We know for sure they probably have problems adapting to the light as they live underground, and we really only encounter them indoor or in subterranean areas. Also, flurs and flashbangs make them wake out and temporarily disable them, so I'd say it's a fair enough bet that they are pretty sensitive to light. So where did these cons come from? Well, peoples. When we, the glorious courier, strolled all into Hopeville, the package we had set off several nuclear warheads, causing earthquakes, which unleashed them onto the land. Before that, they dwelt underground exclusively. They were the residents of Hopeville who went underground when the Great War kicked off. Several centuries of radiation turned them into the gape-mouthed fucks that constantly try to have their way with our livers. Now, this raises a few questions. The first is where they were hiding, and the second is how did this happen? Well, the were is one of two things. The first, and least likely, is a vault. Now, I can't help but feel that while engineering people into lizard folk is the kind of shit the shifty cunts of vault -Tec got up to, there's no way we would have not been able to go into the vault. So the second option is a military base, as there were a ton around the place. These bases also frequently did work with Big MT, as well as other work. As a result, they were frequently protested. Because of this, the protesters were taken away to Big MT for experimentation. Now, I don't think it's too much of a stretch to say that they might have had a research station in Hopeville. Maybe they introduced some reptile DNA to humans, and over the centuries, it caused the creatures that we see today. So what's their behaviour like? Well, they form packs. Most of the pack is composed of regular tunnelers, with larger, possibly alpha male, hulking tunnelers usually at the head of a pack. The queen reigns over them all, and it is assumed that she is the only female member, possibly the species, as only one is found in the divide, but more on that later. There are rare venomous ones, though how they actually developed is unknown. The tunnelers usually hide in shallow holes before they attack their prey, possibly relying on vibrations to tell when one is close, which the protrusions on their back might detect. Oddly enough, they are neutral when they first emerge from a hole. This might mean that while they can tell there is something living near them, they do not know what it is, and only choose to attack when they get a better look. If this is the case, then these bastards might be picky eaters, with only a few creatures on their menu. He believes they will start spreading across the waste very soon, anywhere between a few months to a few short years. If this is the case, how much of a threat would they pose? Well, 
We are quite high level when we encounter them, so they're stronger than most of the things found in the Mojave. A pack can rip apart a divide Deathclaw, many of which are stronger than the legendary Deathclaw found in the Mojave. They can tunnel underground, so it would be almost impossible to detect them, and they can progress straight to the Mojave essentially uncontested, as there are few to zero other subterranean predators in the Mojave. They also breed quickly, which means their numbers would increase rapidly, so all this makes the shit seem like a real threat. Well, maybe not, cause sun. They can't stand sunlight and the Mojave gets plenty of it. Due to the sunlight, I doubt a full scale infestation would ever happen. They would definitely pose a problem, but with the NCR's constant patrols, not to mention the Securetrons and Brotherhood and the Legion, I feel that if push comes to shove, a full scale assault could call their numbers and either wipe them out or at least drive them off. Also, the Divide is their home. There is still a large population of Mark Men and Deathclaws, giving them plenty of food to work with. Also, in most cases, we kill the Queen when we pass through the Cave of Abaddon, which would put a dent in their population growth, at least until another female shows up. So for now, I think the bastards will have to stay put in their shite tunnels. I hope you enjoyed this look at some tunnel dwelling tinkers. If you did, why not like the video and give it a share on some social media. If you have any feedback, I always appreciate it, so leave it below. If you have a suggestion for future episodes, leave it below as well. If you want to get in contact with me, PM me here, on Twitter or on Reddit. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye.